Hey guys and welcome back to The Interceptor. Today we're here with another war video and this is going to be a D69 versus X7V. Uh, this is going to be War 9 of Season 22. Uh, and we're looking to pick up a win here, but these guys are a very, very good alliance. As um, I'm, sure, I'm sure most of you have heard. Uh, but this is actually only the second time we've ever seen a Killmonger boss. And uh, now we have a Cosmic Ghost Rider. Before we did not. But now we have a Cosmic Ghost Rider ranked up so that we're going to be taking. And I actually have a clip of that in this video. Uh, but yes, we have a, a little bit of a strange team today. But it's also like champs I use a lot. Uh, but like the counters that I use for specific fights aren't the normal counters you'd think of. Uh, but this is actually the three champs I use most often in war. is Warlock, Quake, and Magic. So to take in probably my three favorite war champs. Um, is pretty awesome. Uh, Ghost, of course, is also up there, but uh, the fact that she needs two team members uh, most of the time is just a little bit annoying. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a Nihilist on this first node, and uh, when I saw they had Tigra on the second node, I was a little confused because Tigra is actually significantly better than a Nihilist on this first node. Uh, but this is just a super easy Quake fight, so I sped it up for you. Um, but yeah, I've decided to go with half suicides for the entirety of this war, and it's actually going to work out pretty well for me. Um, but uh, this is a little bit of a longer fight, just because I didn't boost massively. I only used uh, section 1 boosts, which I use, uh, unless it's a tight war, which this one wasn't really. Um, I don't recall it being too tight, but I I'm not positive. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to mess up using Quake in war. Uh, it's just not not really going to happen um, too often, very rarely maybe, uh, but now we're going to take Tigra on this next node, or Tigra or whatever, I, I, everyone says it a different way and I just, I don't know which, what's correct, uh, but yeah, this is going to be masochism and this is just a horrible placement for Tigra, like I just do not understand why she is on this node, I was super happy because I did the planning for today and I assigned myself all these fights, but I was just so confused. This just, this node makes absolutely zero sense for Tigra. Just no, no sense at all. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, but right there, um, I'm going to just rewind that just a tiny bit so you guys can see. Um, but maybe I can't rewind it when I'm doing it like this. Yeah, right here. All right. Uh, right here, apparently... That distance right there is a knuckle. I did not know that. I thought it was like triple that distance. But either way, SP1 got me. It was unblockable. Uh, but we're going to throw off a nice juicy L2 here. Uh, which of course is not doing an insane amount of damage because I'm not too boosted. Uh, but it, it probably would have killed if I was using my section 2 or... Uh, my section 2 boost with the same as boss section boost. But yeah, you know what I mean. If I was using bigger boosts. Uh, now we'll go into this Dormammu. I'm going to take a double links. Uh, this is actually one of the easiest uh, minis to take. Double links. Just because the node from path 2 is power focus 1. And the one from node 3 just increases uh, the defender's uh, special attack damage. And when you're quaking. You never have to worry about the opponent gaining power. Let alone, let alone throwing a bar of power. So yeah, you just... It does not make even the slightest difference if you uh, have it fully linked or with no links. It just doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, we're going to just full dex quake this fight. And I didn't slow this one down just because, uh, I don't know, it just, just didn't seem like long enough of a fight to warrant it. And usually when I have class advantage in a fight, unless it was that horrible Sasquatch that I quaked the other war, uh, it's just not, it's not that bad. So we're fine. But uh, this guy's going down pretty nicely. I think he's going to go down on this cycle. Um, ah, no, 3% health. All right, we're going to wait one more. Um, but still, anything under a minute with Quake, I'm very happy with. I know right now I'm in the middle of recording War 12, uh, and I've got some nasty, nasty Quake fights in that war. And it, they're going to be long fights, like two to three minutes each. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but uh, now we've got this man thing on Power Snack, and uh, we actually had one of our alliance members die to this fight using Vision. 
um, and this was in War 11. Uh, but at the time of recording this, I, I had no clue who people used, so I was just like, I mean, magic can do it, so why not? I just took it with magic, but I sped this up. I, I take this fight the exact same way, like, my strategy doesn't change the whole fight, so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm playing regular magic style with uh, a lot of parries involved, and I don't know, it's just not a hard fight. Um, Power Snack is probably... I don't know about the easiest mini boss on the map. Um, I'd say the easiest mini boss on the map is the right one, the first one in section one. Um, yeah, but I'd say this is probably the second easiest on the map. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually true, but it feels true. Um, and Power Snack, I mean, there's just simply no defender you can place on Power Snack that you can't use either Quake or warlock magic can those three champs counter everyone on this note probably i actually don't know i think those three champs can counter literally everyone on power snack um uh, but yes uh now that uh power snack is dead we're going to be going up into this next fight and this is the spite powerful from far domino that i take all the time and this is a little bit of a fun fight, uh, so I of course threw on invulnerability, uh, but with Domino, uh, the parry length is incredibly inconsistent, so you just have to be super, super uh, careful. Uh, and we're still power draining, um, but so we're not really heavying just because I don't want to get the, f the bleeds on and then purify with power gain, it's just uh, like a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but basically, whenever she's um, lucky, I'm not going to use more than one uh, hit. But right there, uh, she actually evades my medium attack. Or sorry, no, she doesn't evade my medium attack. She evades the first hit after my medium attack of my L2, which leads to her blocking it and gaining an insane amount of power. But power gain doesn't really matter on this node when you're using Warlock. Um, it seems kind of weird that... Uh, a node that discourages from using discourages you from using champs that can gain buffs or do gain buffs often uh, is actually the hardest defender on this node is Domino. She is the best defender on this node. Um, it's kind of ironic that the one champ that you uh, that you send to counter is a champ that permanently has a buff. Uh, of course, can't be removed by Domino. It can be removed by a few champions, um, such as Man Thing, like any, basically anyone who nullifies uh, or anyone who has armor break. But it's, it's just honestly not that hard. So there we go. That fight goes down, um, and now we're going into the next fight. And this one has a little bit of a fun moment. I remember. Um, so this is going to be Mojo on kinetic transference um, aspect of evolution. I think it's called. I'm not positive. But yeah, I'm pretty boosted here. And I've got my invulnerability boost on. We're actually going to uh, say goodbye to invulnerability because you do need SP1 boost for this fight. Um, it is much better. Um, and we're going to go in with Magic, who is by far the best counter to Mojo on this node. Like, a Human Torch can't do it because Kinetic Transference, you rely on building Smolders with Torch. Um, and that just doesn't happen because you can't block the L1. Um... But yeah, we're going to power lock here with our L2. He and I'm at 91%. I'm like, okay, this fight is over. Um, it's, this fight's going to get a little bit interesting. So don't uh, don't don't think it's over quite yet. But at the time, I was like, okay, this fight's already over. Uh, and I throw a nice L2 here. And uh, that one actually works. Uh, I was wrong about when it occurs. Um, maybe it's right here. But uh, yeah, right there. You'll see neither of the hits on my L2 power locked. So that's always fun, and if you don't know the way that magic works, uh, her L2 is actually not a guaranteed power lock, it's just a uh, around a 97% chance to power lock, and there we just happen to get the little 3% chance in war. So we have to block an L2, we evade the last hit because I decided it was worth it, but uh, that prompt actually got him to his fury, so his special, uh, like the degen damage from blocking the L2 and from the buffs. Both actually did uh, over twice the amount of damage they would have done. Uh, so yeah, magic's a little low. Uh, but we're gonna heal up magic, and it's not gonna be a big deal. So it looks, it feels so good to be looking back at 
right now and seeing how many how, 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 or, or sorry how many potions I had back then because right now I'm completely out of the level four potions I literally have zero um, and I'm buying like two every day and using them in war right away um, but yeah I had a guy put on the petrify uh, pre-fight here uh, with mr. fantastic uh, and that just guaranteed that he wouldn't get to an l2 he got to about 1.7 bars which is pretty nice uh, but we're gonna play the full parry style and this is a very easy fight so obviously this guy's running willpower he's getting additional healing uh, that comes off of the uh, petrify but the petrify is also reducing uh, healing because that's part of what it does i think this one reduces it by 30 percent and right there i considered not throwing the l2 to tr get try to get rid of the petrify just because it was annoying that it was healing him uh, but we're not really at risk in this fight. So, I mean, we're at 70% and he's about to be at 60 after this special attack. So I'm clearly winning this fight even after I didn't get Limbo to trigger at the beginning of the fight. So I lost 10% health uh, to Poison. Um, and Magic just absolutely obliterates this fight. I, last war I took this fight with Quake and I did, I did fine. Like it doesn't make a difference. Um, you can Quake this with no global. You can play uh, Quake this with no stubborn. Um, or with stubborn, you can just use magic, and it's the world's freest fight, easiest fight. Um, so now uh, he's about to die, so this is going to be fun. We're going to go back in. Uh, we're going to hit a nice reparry because I messed up. Uh, let's throw our L2 here, and he's probably going to be dead in about 15 seconds. Uh, and then... What? What was that? Um... No. Surely that didn't happen, right? Surely the game's going to load. I'm going to be back in the fight, and the fight's going to be paused with Doom at 20%, right? Um, game? You plan on loading anytime soon? Oh. Back to the home screen. Okay, well, maybe it didn't count that I s started the fight. Maybe. Two attack bonus remaining. Magic's at 50. Doom's at 100. And I have to waste another L1 boost. <sighs> so, um, you might say, oh, it's because you had bad Wi-Fi. Nope. I was sitting in my room at this very desk right here while I was recording this fight. It had absolutely nothing to do with my connection. I got kabammed, guys. Kabam servers at their finest. Clutching through and given X7V a free death after I had a flawless fight. That makes tons of sense. Yep. Great game, guys. Great game. All right. Well, we're going to go back in with Magic because Magic is by far the best option, except the only difference here is that we no longer have the white uh, or the, the Mr. Fantastic pre-fight, uh, which doesn't make a huge difference. You guys have seen I've taken this fight about five times without the pre-fight, and uh, this was the first time I tried it with the pre-fight. Um, he's actually healing more without uh, the pre-fight or uh, without the, the Petrify on him. Um, which I didn't expect. He's healing like t uh, th uh, 200, I think it is, per second. Um, and when I have the, ble uh, the stun on him, it's even more. Uh, but yeah, you can see this fight just goes way better. I mean, uh, not way better, way, way faster. We're getting our crits on our L2s. Um, and this guy's going down like really fast. And I'm at 80% as opposed to the 60% I had. And the only difference that that 20% health loss is from, uh, it's it's only from Limbo RNG, that's the only thing. Uh, but 100 no. That fight is done. Uh, now let's go into our next fight. Yay. Somebody move me, please. I said in chat. And then I think I, I take like a second or two to go in and someone's already moved i think no hold on let me let me just skip ahead 
Ah, uh, there we go. Um, I, I had someone in chat say that they would move me um, after I took this Dead Widow. So yeah, Dead Widow on this node, this is the most common node I see Dead Widow on. Uh, I don't really understand it because it just gets absolutely destroyed by Lock or um, Archangel. Omega can do this fight, it's definitely not anywhere near the best option. Ghost can also do this fight, I'd say that's a little better of an option than Omega as long as you have a good enough Ghost player. Um, but yeah, uh, we always send a Warlock and it, we're just absolutely destroying this girl. Uh, it's just not fair. Um, she has willpower, she's barely even going to get to throw specials in this fight. Um, so there, I probably should have gone for parry heavy, I could have power drained below an L1, but right there I get parried, yay, love it, and we get three shocks on us in six hits, so that's nice. Uh, we're down to 30%, so I decided to just chuck off an L2 here, one more L2 is going to kill, um, so I'm not too worried about that, but we're down to 29%. But the thing is, Warlock has insane block proficiency, this is a rank 3 6 star, and parrying a medium attack does 40 damage to me <laughs> which is just crazy so right there i counter another heavy really nicely um, i don't really think there was a difference between the two i think if i deserve to get parried on the first i deserve to get parried on the second personally i don't think i deserve to get parried on either but what do you do now uh we're gonna do something dumb so i realized that i did not have enough potions to heal up Warlock because we are we, we were gonna take this blade with Warlock. Um, I, I, I checked to see if this person had placed with Stubborn, and the plan was if they or sorry if they placed with Willpower because if they placed with Willpower I was gonna use Warlock, and if they didn't I was gonna use Quake. But uh, what I was supposed to do is I was supposed to turn off half suicides going into this fight. If you don't know the way Blade works, uh, whenever the opponent is bleeding, yeah he gains power. So I do notice that, and I'm like, oh, this guy is gaining a lot of power. So I'm like, okay, he goes in here, and uh, now I just have to dex a bunch until he throws the L1. He throws it off, and the fight's over. Um, I mean, there's really not too much to talk about this fight. I'm at a full yellow bar, and there was no danger in this fight. Um, even if he had thrown the L1, I highly doubt it would have killed me. Um, but it could have. Um... It's possible, and obviously, if I were to take this fight again, I do believe Quake's actually a very, very solid option for this uh, for this fight. I do believe that um, I will at least remember to take off Bleed. Uh, I can use Poison Suicides if I really want, but you just can't use Bleed against Blade. Uh, but he's down to 40% after a minute. I mean, this is a pretty uh, easy and fast fight. Uh, but like I said, there is a special uh, feature from uh, someone actually you guys have never seen before in my alliance. I've never featured one of his videos, and uh, that's because he's never fought a boss for us before. Uh, currently, every single boss that we've ever faced can be countered by either Ghost or Void. Um, and then, yeah, either Ghost or Void. Uh, but today we found a boss that neither Ghost nor Void could take, so we sent a CGR. Of course, Legacy has a few videos of uh, CGR versus a Killmonger, uh, but Guardian actually pulled his six-star uh, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider two days before this fight. He had two days to learn how to use CGR. So I was doing the planning for this war, um, and uh, yeah, he gets it if he gets hit a few times, uh, but he he's doing fine. He has a lot of health, um, and I told Guardian, "Okay, you're taking the boss today." learn how to play cgr he's like okay i will i'll learn how to play cgr by the end so there he gets hit one more time he should have thrown a heavy attack but right here he does the right thing he throws the heavy attack um admittedly not a perfect fight uh but as you guys are gonna see that's not gonna end up mattering um as cosmic ghost rider is about to absolutely decimate this man of course, you are, you're immune to reverberation due to Cosmic Ghost Rider's permanent armor break. Uh, but yeah, he's already hitting pretty hard. He's hitting 15k uh, medium attacks. And he's going to chuck off this L2. And that is just disgusting damage. And look what he's going to do here. He's going to bait out a heavy. One hit. Dead. That is insane. 
That is gross. I really want CGR from my featured six star. I, I'd rank two him and then rank three him whenever I form my next cosmic. But yeah, that is just absolutely disgustingly easy with uh, CGR. And uh, Guardian actually has another Killmonger boss, War 12, as we saw him for the first time since War 9 in War 12. Um, but yes, we did end up losing against uh, X7V. We lost by four. It was obviously not a good war by both of us. Uh, we're usually sub-10, and they're usually sub-10 as well. But shit happens. Uh, we did not have the cleanest war. Uh, but that is going to be five and four on the season for the Alliance. I'm going to have two deaths total. Of course, you guys know disconnects obviously do not count as, death, as deaths. Um, and uh, PSR this season is uh, 67 out of 68, which is actually... 99 percent it's technically 98.5 percent but we round uh we always like round to the closest number on this channel and the closest number in this case is 99 uh and since i took nine fights in this war we are going to be at um what, what is this uh since i took nine fights in this war we are going to be at uh 19 deathless streak as of course we have not died since war seven uh, which is not really a long time, but still. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next video.